Toxic or poisonous fish contain poisonous substances or toxins in their flesh, making them dangerous to consume. It can be difficult to tell the difference between an edible fish and a poisonous one at first glance, but poisonous fish share certain traits. These traits include their habitation, which is mainly in shallow waters around reefs, lagoons, or unnaturally discolored water. Their body shape is normally round or boxy, and have hard shell-like skins that are covered with spines or bony plates. They also have small gills, parrot-like mouths, and may or may not have small belly fins. Usually, their body shape is normally associated with their name. While most deep water fish are safe to eat, caution should still be exercised as some poisonous fish species can also be encountered in deep waters. To differentiate them, poisonous fish are subdivided into four main groups. The first group includes those that contain poison in their flesh, such as the viscera, musculature, skin, or slime. When consumed, these fish can have a toxic effect on humans. They belong to a group called ichthyosarcotoxic fish. The second group, called ichthyotoxic, has their poison restricted to the gonads. There is a certain relationship between gonad activity and toxin production in these fish. The third group, known as ichthyohemotoxic fish, have poison in their blood, and the last group of poisonous fish, called ichthyogalotoxic fish, contain their poison within the bile of their gallbladder. Beginning with the first group, ichthyosarcotoxic fish typically exhibit various types of poisoning and intoxication based on their species. Let's take a look at some examples of poisonous fish within this particular group. The first category in this group is poisonous sharks. Poisoning from certain species of shark, also known as elasma branch, Fish poisoning is usually accompanied by gastroenteritis and diarrhea. Consuming the meat of poisonous sharks has been reported to cause intoxication, and more severe cases occur when their liver is consumed. This is because their toxin, named carcotoxin A and B, is mainly found in the liver. Repeated boiling of poisonous shark meat with fresh water has been shown to decrease the lethality of the poison. However, to prevent shark meat intoxication, it is discouraged to consume meat from large tropical shark species. Cutting shark meat into thin slices and hanging them to air dry allows the juice containing the toxin to drain. These pieces are then sun-dried thoroughly, as poorly dried meat tends to be more poisonous than fresh meat. Examples of poisonous sharks include the sharp-nosed seven-gill shark and blunt-nosed six-gill shark. The second category is ciguatoxic fish. The poisoning from these fish is commonly referred to as ciguatera, which can manifest as either an acute or chronic intoxication syndrome. It can cause violent gastroenteritis, cutaneous eruption with fever and malaise, or severe gastrointestinal symptoms accompanied by respiratory paralysis that can lead to death. Typically, the photosynthetic marine dinoflagellate of the genus Gambiardiscus produces a toxin called ciguatoxin through metabolic activities. The toxicity of this toxin increases as it moves up the food chain. Herbivorous grazing fish feed on the dinoflagellates, which are then consumed by carnivorous fish. Ciguatoxin usually accumulates in the liver and viscera of these fish. Through the fish's metabolic processes, the original form of ciguatoxin is transformed into other lethal forms of the toxin. Ultimately, consuming these fish leads to ciguatera poisoning. There are more than 400 fish species that can potentially be ciguatoxic, with red snapper and barracuda being common examples. The third category is clupeotoxic fish. These fish produce clupeotoxin, which, when ingested, causes intoxication characterized by a metallic taste in the mouth, severe gastrointestinal symptoms, respiratory distress, muscular paralysis, coma, and sudden death. Clupeotoxic fish typically feed on planktonic organisms, 
and the production of this toxin mainly occurs during the warm months of the year. The primary preventive measure against clupia toxin intoxication is to avoid consuming clupiaform fish during the warm season. It is worth noting that the poison of these fish cannot be detected by appearance and cannot be deactivated through heating. Therefore, methods such as drying, salting, and cooking are ineffective in preventing the intoxication. Examples of clupatoxic fish include sardines, herrings, tarpons, slick heads, bonafish, and anchovies. The fourth category is gempilotoxic fish. Consuming these fish can lead to a condition known as gempilotoxication or karyorrhea. This condition is characterized by involuntary anal discharge that is brownish green or orange in color. It occurs because these fish contain a high amount of non-saponifiable lipids, which cannot be digested by humans. The specific liquid wax ester found in these fish is called gempilotoxin, and is primarily responsible for the laxative and purgative effects. When the liquid ester wax is ingested, it causes karyorrhea and other gastrointestinal symptoms, such as increased frequency of defecation, due to the lubricating effect of the indigestible wax esters. Examples of fish that can cause this condition include castor oil fish and escalar. The fifth category is scombrotoxic fish. These fish contain a toxin known as scombrotoxin, which is associated with scombroid or histamine fish poisoning. Scombroid fish have high levels of free histidine in their muscle tissues, and consuming them after mishandling or improper storage can lead to intoxication. This type of intoxication has also been linked to consuming other non-scombroid fish. Ideally, the increased level of histamine is generated by the degradation of substances in the fish muscle caused by bacteria. This process releases additional byproducts that potentiate histamine toxicity. Unfortunately, once these toxins are released, they cannot be destroyed by cooking, smoking, grilling, freezing, or canning. The symptoms of scombrotoxin intoxication resemble those of an allergy and may occur between 10 minutes and one hour after ingestion. Examples of scombrotoxic fish include frigate tuna, kawakawa, Indian mackerel, yellowfin tuna, and longtail tuna. The sixth category is the hallucinogenic fish, some of these fish have been described by the locals as the fish that make dreams or the fish that inebriates. The intoxication from these fish is normally associated with hallucinations and nightmares. This occurs after consuming the head or flesh of these tropical reef fish. The toxin from these fish has been reported to be heat stable and cannot be destroyed through various cooking methods. The poisoning symptoms begin to show after two hours of consuming fresh fish, starting with vomiting and nausea. Later, the victim may display aggression, screaming, lack of motor coordination, and mental depression. Though not quite conclusive, it has been suggested that the consumption of toxic macroalgae by these fish ends up contaminating their flesh. Examples of hallucinogenic fish include the yellow-striped goatfish, flathead grey mullet, streamlined spinefoot, white-spotted spinefoot, streaked spinefoot, and dusky spinefoot. The seventh category is tetrodotoxic fish. The perfect example of these fish is the pufferfish, which produces a powerful neurotoxin called tetrodotoxin. This toxin is one of the most potent marine toxins, capable of blocking the sodium channel in muscles and nerves, rendering these tissues non-functional. This particular toxin is about 10,000 times more lethal than cyanide and remains relatively stable at cooking temperatures. Tetrodotoxin poisoning is quite common in regions where pufferfish or fugu is consumed as delicacies, such as Taiwan, Japan, Hong Kong, and other Southeast Asian regions
it has been hypothesized that marine bacteria species capable of producing tetrodotoxin reside within tetrodotoxic fish and other marine animals. In pufferfish, the toxicity of tetrodotoxin is more potent when their ovaries are consumed compared to the rest of their organs. Upon ingestion of tetrodotoxic fish, the intoxication manifests in four stages. Perioral numbness and paresthesia, followed by lingual and facial numbness accompanied by slurred speech. This is then followed by fixed or dilated pupils, flaccid paralysis, and finally, the victim suffers from severe respiratory distress, cardiac-related issues, and unconsciousness. Death can occur as soon as 17 minutes or between 6 to 24 hours after consuming the fish. Examples of tetrodotoxic fish include the white-spotted puffer, stellate puffer, brown-lined puffer, milk-spotted puffer, lunar tail puffer, silver-cheeked toadfish, spotfin burfish, birdbeak burfish, spot base burfish, long-spined porcupine fish, spotfin porcupine fish, black-blotched porcupine fish, four-bar porcupine fish, sharp-tail mola, ocean sunfish, southern sunfish, and slender sunfish. Looking at the next group of poisonous fish, there are those whose poison is restricted to their gonads, collectively referred to as ichthyotoxic fish. These fish can inhabit fresh or brackish waters. Most cases of intoxication from these fish occur after consuming fully ripe egg masses found in the fish ovaries. Interestingly, these fish have high levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids, such as arachidonic acid, derived from the food chain. The levels of these fatty acids are quite high in the gonads of ischithyotoxic fish. Therefore, consuming these fatty acids induces hemolytic and cytotoxic effects in humans. In severe cases, the victim experiences paralysis, muscular cramps, convulsions, coma, and eventually death. Examples of ichthyotoxic fish include the yellow barb, common carp, and Wells catfish. Looking at the next group of poisonous fish, we have those whose poison is confined to the bile of their gallbladder. These fish are collectively known as ichthyogallotoxic fish. Most cases of intoxication from these fish occur in people whose traditions embrace fish bile and gallbladder as medicine to treat various ailments. This practice is common in India and other East Asian countries. The bile of these fish contains salt, various pigments, and some alcohol compositions consisting of a toxic bile acid that can take different forms. This toxic bile acid is generally referred to as cyprinol, sulfate or cyprinol, which has nephrotoxic and hepatotoxic properties. The toxin from fish bile has detrimental effects on the kidneys, but can also affect other organs such as the liver, gastrointestinal tract, and heart, leading to multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. Examples of such fish include grass carp, silver carp, rojo, or labeo rojita, and bighead carp. The last group of poisonous fish is those that have poison in their blood serum, collectively called ethiohemotoxic fish. Drinking raw, fresh, and uncooked blood of these fish leads to intoxication that can even be fatal. They possess a toxin called ichthyohemotoxin, or fish serum toxin. Their intoxication can either be systemic or local, with symptoms such as gastrointestinal complications, paralysis, inflammation, respiratory distress, and possible death. Intoxication of this kind has been associated with different eel species, including the mores, congers, and anguilids. It is important to be cautious when handling fresh eel, and wearing thick gloves is recommended to avoid the fresh blood coming into contact with your skin or eyes. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you have enjoyed this list, and just in case you would like to see more content like this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for your continued support, and let me know in the comment section the type of content you would like to see next. See you in the next one.